All right. So today, again, we'll talk about PHP. What exactly is PHP and why is it very important when it comes to web development? So today, we're going to discuss the fundamentals. This is going to be another programming language. By the way, have you experienced or have you, um, so man, have you tried PHP before or not experienced about any new with your previous lessons or some previous courses? Nothing. Papa, is this going to be the first time, first time that you encounter that you will encounter PHP? First time, Bene? Yes, sir. No, sir. Right. It's okay. So PHP is another programming language. So if after PHP, how many programming languages have you encountered so far? Including PHP, which we'll start today. Pina pila na programming language yung natry na? Guys, una kay C plus plus, di ba? Yes, sir. C plus plus, Java din. Java. All right. Humana po mo Java sa inyong second year. Then this time is gonna be PHP. So this is going to be another programming language. So although it's it maybe ma ma worry that it's because it's another programming language, but in reality, it's just something that is similar to any other programming languages before. Now, if you are very good or maybe familiar na kasi C plus plus or you took your time to really learn about C plus plus maybe two years ago, then it's not gonna be very hard for you to understand any other programming languages, let alone PHP. It's because you already know the fundamentals. So once you already from once once you're already familiar with the fundamentals of programming, it would be easy for you to learn any other programming languages because most mostly they have the same or they have the similar approach when it comes to how the programming language works. The only thing that differs are the syntax. Kumbaga, same ra siya og kana mo cut on ka og language, kana human language. Um if kabalo ka mo Bisaya, kabalo ka mo Tagalog, kabalo ka mo English, it would I don't know. If kabalo ka mo Bisaya, kabalo ka mo Tag, it would be easier for us to understand Philippine or Tagalog. It's because we already know same ra man ang approach. Ang 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 change ra ang lahi ra is um, how do we use the words? So, for example, lahi ang, lahi ang translation o sa kabutang from Bisaya to Tagalog. Pero same ra gyapon ang concept, same ra ang grammar. Something like that. It's also similar with programming language. All the fundamentals, all the concepts are the same. The only thing that differs are the actual syntax or katong mga keywords na itong gamitin for us to be able to make the codes work. But it's going to be the same. What do you mean by that? That means we'll still be using variables. We'll still be using data types. We'll still be using the conditional statement, statements like if, else, if, and switch. And then we all we are also going to use loops. All right. The only thing that differs are nare gamayinga changes when it comes to the syntax. All right. And that's what we're going to do today. So I I am expecting that learning PHP is not going to be very hard for everybody. And in fact, we should be able to finish it for the rest of the semester. Okay. So this is PHP. It's it is koan. Murasha of ang yang meaning definitions of PHP is like a koan. It's like a paradox. It's called PHP Hypertext Protocol. Nada So ang First of word your P stands for PHP and then H stands for hypertext and the last P is preprocessor. More like paradox ba? Nga ang, ang definition itself is part of the uh, ang, ang definition itself of the word PHP is part of ano ba? Kumanti mo? Ang definition sa PHP is PHP hypertext transfer protocol. So ang first letter P also stands for PHP. More ba siyang paradox ba? Kabalik-balik lang. Alright, but PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. The PHP Hyper, Hypertext Preprocessor, PHP, is a programming language that allows web developers to create dynamic content that interacts with databases. PHP is basically used for developing web-based software applications. Hold on. PHP is widely used open source scripting language. That means since it's called open source, it is free to use. It's free to use for everybody. All right. PHP scripts are executed on the server. PHP is free to download and use. So here's a few things that we have to remember. PHP is a scripting language, a server-side 
scripting language. That means when it's, when you say server side, it it can only be accessed on a web server. It can only be run. It can only be executed on a web server. Unlike unlike C plus plus, diba? If you can remember, we just have to we just have to install an IDE called Dev C plus plus or Trev Edit. Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? For mobile, uh, we use CXX Droid, right? CXX Droid and Dev C plus plus. We're just we're just going to install it in our computer, and then we'll be able to work it out. Or we're we are able to execute it, to execute our codes, our program. However, PHP needs to be executed on the server. Para mugana ang PHP codes, it needs to be executed on the server. What do you mean by that? That means it will only be Kanara. As easy as that, it can only be executed on a web server. That means atong computers na atong gamiton, ang atong cell phones nga gamiton for web development, we'll have to turn it into a server first. Ang ato sa siyang himuon nga server so that we'll be able to use PHP. And how do we do that? We'll discuss it in just a moment. And then PHP is free to download and use. Now, our computers cannot understand PHP on its own. That's why we have to install a server and we need to install, and that server needs to be installed with the PHP programming language as well. So, the programming languages are needs to be installed and PHP is free to download and install So That's it. It's going to be very easy, but we have to install it first. PHP files can contain text, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP code. So the good thing about PHP, why is it very useful when it comes to web development? It's because it's very versatile. That means it can contain even those we, uh, it can contain those things that we already learned. So since we already learned about HTML, CSS, we can use those to be added on the, our PHP files. Okay. So that means all those HTML files that we've created before, we can just turn it into PHP and it will work just the same. PHP code is executed on the server and the result is returned to the browser as plain HTML. So who can remember, when on our World Wide Web discussion, maybe on our first month, we discussed about um, dynamic websites. Can you remember dynamic website? What do you mean by dynamic websites, by the way? Anyone? Who can remember? What do you mean by dynamic websites? Or how dynamic websites work na lang? Anyone? Nangalimot? One, sir, murag easy ra siyang i-update, sir, ba? Okay, yes, but uh, that's the benefit. Pero how does dynamic website work? Um, sir, dynamic websites are it's a very up. interactive in nature, which okay. offers a lot of features and, um, yes, a lot of features mm -hmm. that users can use. Okay, thank you. But how exactly does it work? Okay, um, let's take the word dynamic na lang para, para di mo maglibog. How do web, how does the web work? How do web work? Sakto ba ang grammar? Unsay, unsay, unsay buhaton sa, unsay processes involved on how the web works, the worldwide web works. First is, it's an interaction between three different systems, right? We have client. We have client, and then we have the DNS server, and then server. Can you remember? Yes. Every time that we're going to open a website, the website, the you, the HTTP will check on the DNS to get the IP address, and then once the IP address is located, it will be used to locate the web server. Now, here's the thing. The web server will process all the requests coming from the client. And then, ubun sa magandang request, it could be either scripts, database, whatever it is. The web server will, will convert those contents, like the scripts, the database records, etc., and convert it into. So, ito, it convert into. Anyone? 
Ay, wala nga limot mo. So, if na siya makita ng mga script, mga database, unsay sa'yo buhaton sa server before niya isend sa client. Anyone? Convert it to graphics. Look. HTML. Please don't forget, guys. If the web server will convert everything to HTML before sending it back to the client. Ano gani i-convert niya HTML? Ano kinala niya i-convert into HTML? The readable. Para sir. readable, sir. Okay, para readable. Ano dey? Unsa problema sa client dey? Di mo siya ka render o concept programming language okay, like that's... HTML, like PHP. All right, that's true. So again, web servers need to convert first all the all the scripts, all the database records into HTML <clears throat> before sending it back to the client because. Most clients, like the web browsers, can only read HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So, be before niya i-convert into, uh, before niya i-send, it needs to be converted to HTML. So, that's the same case with PHP. PHP code is executed on the server, this one right here. And the result is returned to the browser as plain HTML. Send it back to the client. And then, PHP files have extension.php. All right, so to save your files in, on, and in PHP, it needs to be saved as, for example, index.php. So this is going to be our new file extension in .php. So um, in, our, in our next, hopefully next semester, once we'll be doing a web designing already. So instead of saving our first web page or all our web pages as index.html, we're going to change it into index.php. PHP is the file extension. All right, so what can PHP do? PHP can generate dynamic web page content. So when we say dynamic, basically it's something that has interaction. Not na shy interactivity and processes. So for example, we're going to create a website that will book a koan, that will book a ticket for travel. So PHP can do that. PHP can create, open, read, write, delete, and close files on server. So it's called CRUD system. Create, read, update, delete. Create, read, update, delete. So basically, it can delete record, it can create record, and close files on the server. So this this is, go on, this is uh, let's say, this is particularly for uh, databases. So let's say, for example, we create a website that will register, let's say, voters. Sa iskulahan, nana. So especially katong recently na election, so ganahan ka mga na SG election recently. So if you're going to create a web, a web application that will automatically count or cast the votes. So basically, you're going to create records. So every time that the student will vote a certain candidate, you're creating a record. Alright, now if you want to, if ganahan ka nga mo, basaho ni mo, o pila nakabok ang count, so you're going to read the record. Okay, and then if ganahan kang i-change ang name sa Osaka candidate, ganahan kang sa iblay kang type sa first name, you're going to update the record. And na ay Osaka, Osaka candidate nga na disqualify, you have to delete it, you have to remove it from the record, then you are going to delete the record. PHP can do that. So update or create, read, update, and delete records from the database. PHP, PHP can collect form data. So that's the same thing with create. So we can create, we can create, kung baga kung sa C++ pa, that's C in. It can collect record coming from the input. So that's the same thing. The input function for PHP is through forms. I will talk more about forms in just a moment. Pero katong mga forms pa, kanang mag this is called forms, like uh, username, password, and then submit. This is called form. So whatever it is that you entered on this form, PHP can collect those data. All right? PHP can send and receive cookies. What do you mean by cookies again? 
we can remember what they mean by cookies. We discussed that last time. What exactly that is? Is that it, Anyone? Small, 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 right. small text files. All right. So for example, you type address in your username, so your username and password, and you click submit. And then sometimes it will say save password or something like that. So once you click save password, your username and password will be, since those are texts, right? those are text files, it will be saved as cookies. It will be saved on your browser so that it will be saved on your browser so that next time you don't necessarily have to enter the same username and password all over again. So that's called cookies. So PageSpeed can do that. So PageSpeed is the one responsible for accepting cookies so that you can save it on your browser. PageSpeed can add, delete, modify data in your database. So again, we have here add, create. Same regapon, balik regapon ta sa crud, add, uh, delete, and modify data in your database. So like I said, if you wanted to, going back to the example ganina, SG elections. So if you wanted to add new candidates or add new vote, cast new vote, then you can add, you can do that using PHP. If you wanted to delete the record, or you can modify the record, meaning edit the record that is already being added to your database. You can do that all through PHP. And then PHP can be used to control user access. So that's why we have admin, kapante mga mga website nga administrators, or unfortunately, may tag na amoy nakasulay mo face-to-face kay Usually sa una, during enrollment, the registrar will will hire will hire students to kana para sa encoding ba and na i certain tasks that cannot be accessed by students because of user control privileges that means ang makita ra sa mga grado is katorang mga users nga na i high privilege for the users katong mga encoder igo ra gid silang encode dinha sila maka access og uban nga mga functionality sa website so that's called control uh, that's user control, uh, being able to control what are the things that a certain user, certain type of user can do, and then apo yung mga users that, that, have full, that has full access, na apo yung mga users na gamay na ilang access. So PHP can do that. Again, that's called user control. And then PHP can encrypt data. What do you mean by encrypt data? Guys. Hide. 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 Protect the information. Let's uh, try to give an example now. Say example, Anna. Encrypted data. Encrypted data. Samples are password. All right. It's true. Password. So sometimes when we say when we write password, di ba kung mo type tag tag password like dere ang mga gawas kaya na inana manasa. Usually inana ba makita? It's something that we cannot see. Yes, sir. Correct, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And although, uh, basically, this will only protect, and this will only protect the actual ng mga viewers. Let's say, mo type kasi ng password niya, nang nagtanaw sa muli ko, this will protect, um, this type of encryption will protect your password from being viewed by somebody around you. Pero, there are other ways in, in encrypting data. Although, nakainanan na siya, although ang ato ang password is naka dot 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 ba na siya, or asterisk ba na, that's does that not mean that it's fully encrypted? Those ha hackers can still view the, the password. So in um, encryption, uh, basically it will be discussed to you on your information security in a lesson. I think I'm information security. When say encryption is that um, most passwords, for example, the type of password name is kana password one two three. Mo na makita sa database. Mo na makita sa hacker. Um, PHP can encrypt this particular password into something else. Maybe it changed niya into random letters. Let's say E X three two J dot. Ano ba? May mo siyang random na letters coming from this. So that's called encryption. So PHP can do that. It will convert your password or any uh, in, any confidential information into Encrypted data. What do you mean by encrypted data? Usually, mo niya may tabo. Yang yah kada letter yahang usbon, yang usbon ang mga letter, so that it will it cannot be traced. Kung saan lang ganito ang password niya, mo gibuta. Alright. So those are the things that PHP can do, and it's mostly used for web designing. It's because of its 
to and versatility when it comes to record management and uh, web design. So that's why it's mostly used for web development. So how to install? How to use PHP? We need to install it. So for Windows, please install XAMP web stack. Nakatry na po move XAMP before. Wala pa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, nakatry na during sa inyong database, siguro, management. Sa DBMS na yes, sir. Right. So, if na mo yung XAM, just make sure it's updated. And katung wala pa, please go to www.apachefriends.org slash download for you to get the um, XAM. And another option is one. So, ganada yung kang maglisod-lisod, ganada kang experience of any other um, web stack. Um, make sure, um, another option that I can suggest is one server. So again, XM stands, this is a web stack, stands for cross-platform, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl. And then WAMP is Windows, Apache, um, MySQL, and PHP. So these two are the most common ones, but katong gi-install nato sa laboratory karon is XM. Okay? And then for Android, muna ni, for Android users, please download and install KS Web. So this link right here, will route you to the, a free version. Kana bang hack siya? Kana bang cracked version? So again, if you wish to use, kana ginahari dyan mo nga, kuwanda dyan, dili siya cracked, you can download and install it from Google Play Store and you just have to pay for a certain amount for you to use the, the kuwanda, katong overall or kanang full nga features. Alright, again, for Android users, uh, KS Web. I think if you're going to download this one, it's called KS Web Pro. And then for Windows, install XAMP. All right. And then the next thing that we're going to do is turn on. Once you install, okay, let's start with XAMP first. Once you install XAMP, click the XAMP con or open XAMP control panel and make sure to turn on Apache and MySQL for the meantime. All right. Make sure to click Start for Apache and MySQL. The Apache is the web server, and then MySQL is for our database server. Okay, and then for the other options like FileZilla, Mercury, Tomcat, just disregard them. Uh, we're not going to be using these three. We'll only be using Apache and MySQL. Understood? And then wait until you see the port numbers here. So let's just try. So let's open up XAM, Control Panel. Tada. And then you'll see this uh, dialog. We just have to start Apache and MySQL. And wait until you'll see the port numbers and you'll see here that it is active. Okay, may crash ang ako. Um, andara, okay na. Alright, may crash. So I think I have to restart my PC to get started with my control panel for some reason. My MySQL decided not to start. So, so on, 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 class on. Hold on, let me try it again. All right, I think I think it's working now. Okay, so just in case it will also fail on your own, on your end, just make sure to keep starting. Okay, in my case, I have to do it three times, at least three times to break to the keyboard. So again, if you see port numbers here, then that means it's already started. And you'll also see status change detected running. That means it's already started. Okay? That means your computer is now a web server. All right? Next. For KS Web Pro, uh, to turn on, all right, so once you install the KS Web Pro, um, go to status. Make sure the KS Web Pro is turned on. And then go to Light TPD. Make sure the enable server is on as well. And then PHP is enabled as well. Okay. This is for KS Web Pro. So uh, let's see if I can hold on. KS Web Pro. All right. Let me share my screen along with before we proceed. Oh, 
Không lẽ để quần này All right, it's okay. I think that disable na ako ang connection, mobile connection sa kong laptop. It's okay. Uh, basically, you'll see the same thing. If we're going to turn on, okay, once you open up TS Web Pro, you'll see these options. Again, status must be on, and then Lite TPD must be on, and PHP must be on, and then MySQL. Muna libot ko butang MySQL should be turned on as well. Okay. So and then please take note of the. Your uh, the IP addresses because we will be using this in just a moment. Okay, take note of the IP addresses. Now, how do we save our files for us to be able to run it on our on our web server? So for XAMPP users, make sure to save all your files inside this. So if you install your XAMPP in sa C nga drive, go to XAMPP folder and go to htdocs. That means that nato is save ang ato ang files. Alright, di nato bisa isave bisa kasa isave nato dere. Again, if you install, if you're using XAMPP and you install it sa C, go to C, go to XAMPP and go to htdocs and yah nato isave ang atong file. So, okay, let me show it to you. So in my case, ako nisyo ang gisave sa. Alright, gisave nako siya sa D ang XAMPP. So when I op, when I open my drive, so nasa sa open ako ako ng D. Na, na XAMP dere. So instead of XAMP, na htdocs dere. And dere na to isave ang ato ang files. So in my case, ubay ubay na nyo kung web page na gama. So let's try to open up one. Katong, katong, katong ako ang e-commerce na website. So let me open it up. This is my website, kining KCKS. So how to access that? We just have to. Open up localhost and then KCKS and then it will route me to my website. Kana. Kaya ang may tabo if dilit nako siya ibutang sa atong mga folder dilit siya na dilit siya matutulan sa web server. Okay. So that's the root. Kumbaga it's the root directory. So set. So again, go to your installation drive and then go to XAMPP and go to htdocs. As for KS web user. All projects must be saved inside the htdocs folder, usually here. So once you install KS Web Pro, it will automatically create an. Ug asan niyo siya install if sa internal storage, it will automatically create an htdocs folder. So make sure to save all your project inside htdocs folder. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions so far? And you will still be using Trap Edit, by the way. Uh, you still be using Trap Edit for your mobile users. Uh, make sure to change the directory though. Uh, later on, I'm going to give you an file. Uh, I think, let me see, okay, delete man ma connect ako ang lap, cell phones ang laptop today because of the recent update siguro. But I'll see what I can do so I can show you on saan mo pag change ang mo directory from sa inyong shop edit to this particular folder. Do you have any questions so far? Nah, wala. Again, sir. Okay. Alright, so the PHP basic PHP syntax. So make sure this time, make sure that you are currently on full screen. Make sure naka full screen mo, and then um, naka landscape so that you can see the code. Since we'll be dealing with codes now, a PHP script can be placed anywhere in the document. So a PHP script can start with this opening. This is the opening. Um, kumbaga, opening tag. That is in open angle bracket question mark PHP and ends with a question mark PHP. So remember, PHP can be placed anywhere in the documents. For example, you created an HTML file, so you we can you can put the PHP tag, the PHP scripts anywhere. within the body tag. Of course, it should be within the body tag. And then to start writing a PHP code, again you start with this. 
you start writing this first. And then end with this. Kung sa PHP pa ni, or kung sa C++ pa ni, if you can remember, you will start with the int name. Ana, and then, Ana, and then everything, all the PHP, oh, C++ codes are inside the block. For PHP, you just have to start with this and end here. So everything would be your PHP code. Everything inside this. So instead of using Ana, we are using this. Nagets ra? Yes, sir. The default file extension for PHP files is PHP. Uh, like I said, so every, this time if we're going to create a web page, it's no longer HTML, but it's going to be .php. A PHP file normally contains HTML tags and some PHP scripting codes. So like I said, a PHP file contains HTML tags. So basically, kato ato mga nagamat na last time, ang ato rang usbo ng yang file extension to PHP, it will still work. And a PHP statement always end with a semicolon. So same rin yapon siya sa Java, same siya sa C++. A PHP statement is going to end, should always end with a semicolon. All right. So below, we have an example of a simple PHP file with a PHP script that uses built-in PHP function echo to output the text hello world on the web page. So before we try this, let's take a look. So it's the same thing, riba. Right? Same rin yapon sa ito ang HTML. We have the, doc, the, documentation, uh, the document declaration or DPD. And then we have HTML, and then we also have HTML, cl close HTML, and then basically it's the same thing, all the structures that we already learned. And then inside the body we have here, this is the PHP code. And this PHP code will print the word hello world on the screen using PHP function for output called echo. Alright? Kung sa C++, on sa lang ganito atong output function? C out. C out. Alright? So that's why, that's the reason why if you if you already know the foundation of a programming language or a programming, it would be easy for us to learn any other programming language because same problem siya. For example, output. On sa nato pag output, for PHP, we will use echo, but in C++, we will use C out. Alright, so same there ba? At least you already know what, what about kinala rin yung translate word by word or syntax by syntax. Okay, so for us to print the word hello world on the screen, it will say, uh, we will write the, we will output it using echo and then a double quote and then inside of double quote would be the string that we are trying to output and then end with a semicolon. But before anything else, we have to enclose it with, uh, can you open angle? question mark php and then close it with question mark close angle all right so let's try let's try that let's open up our vs code and by the way i'm going to give you an activity during our face to face class and uh, we are going to try one we are going to create a simple php uh, program back katong mag class nito online and like like i said i'm going to give you the schedule hopefully by the end of the day Close and open again. All right, so let's try use uh, let's try creating our fir very first PHP program. So let's start our program with an index. Again, the file name is going to be index uh, dot PHP. So remember, it's no longer HTML but PHP. But same thing, if we're going to create a website, it should always the first website 
the file name of the first web page would be index. So, I'm going to run siya nga practice that we'll call it index.php. And then, we will start with our uh, basic HTML structure. It's an atay doc type, na atay HTML head, we have body, close body, etc. So, basically, everything would be the same. Let's change the title to uh, intro to PHP. Okay? So, we can still use the other HTML tags that we already know. That we already know. So let's, for example, we can still use h1, and then uh, let's call it my first web, uh, my first PHP web page. All right. So again, one of the one of the good thing about one of the good things about PHP is that it can use it can be used inside an HTML file. Right, and PHP file can contain HTML tags, etc. So that means, gagamatag HTML dere, basically the entire thing or HTML codes, and then we can pwede na tumba insert and all mga PHP scripts, right, for specific functions. So how do we add our PHP ganit? What is the opening tag, guys? The tongue parser. Open angle bracket. And then question mark. question mark. Question mark. And then and then PHP. PHP. All right. Eh, kung sa ganito ato ang and then we'll close it with a question mark and then close angle brackets. And then for kung sa ganito atong output atong C out kung bago. C out kung bago. Echo. 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 And then the string should be enclosed with double quotation. Let's say for example, let's call it hello world. All right. Pinaka basic. And then end it with Semicolon. 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 Right? So, ang semicolon is after sa imuhang function. So, you can either write it this way or siguro ang uban niya mga medyo arting ng mga programmers, they will write it this way. Nana? Again, you, if it's just, just a single line, you can do it as well. But most probably, this would be how, this is how you're going to write it most of the time. Especially if daghan ka ayaw ng mga lines of codes. Alright, so again, we started with PHP and then our PHP um, function and then closing PHP. So if we're going to write it and make sure again to run to para marun niyo yung PHP, this file right here, make sure na naka-on ang inyo hang XAMP or ang inyo KS Web Pro. Okay? Just take note. So let's open it up. I know, sayo pa Before anything else, okay, hold on. Ang hita po is, disave na po siya into this particular folder. Kung sa lahat, asa ganito siya isave? HDOC. HDOC. Alright, so let's try again. Let, let me just move it. Let, let me move this particular file. Uh, let me, pane, control X na lang na ako na siya. And add to kasi yung installation. In my end, it's gonna be saved inside drive D. Go to XM, go to HDDocs. And then we'll create a folder here. So the, the folder that you're going to create is the name of your website. So let's say, for example, let's call it intro. To PHP, intro to PHP. That's gonna be the name of my website. So, unsa una ko siya pagbulong. So, let me paste it right here. And then, let me close this. And let's open it up. Open folder. Let's go to XAM. Go to HDocs. And then, intro to PHP. This one. Let's select that. Let's save it. Okay. Index.php. Now, how are we going to run it? Again, make sure that the X amp is not turned on. That's why the Apache and the SQL. For KS Web Pro, make sure that the Light PPD and PHP is turned on as well. And then, next is... Let's go back. Okay, I'm going to put up on the sound check. How do we execute our file, our program? So go to your browser and enter localhost slash and then the name of your folder. Ang sagay ito yung name sa itong folder? Intro to PHP. So make sure to type in the folder name. That's your website name. So again, localhost slash intro to PHP. And then tara. We'll run siya. Tara. What will happen if dili na ito gamitan o localhost? Kung dito na ito, kung sa day mahita po, kung i-open na ito, coming here. 
to canal. For example, this is our file. Let's open it with browser. Open just another app. Let's say Google Chrome. So may tabo. Muni may tabo. Alright. So since wala siya ni Agi of server, dili niya mabasa o kung saan ang dili niya mabasa because again, our our browser can only read HTML and CSS. Although, these are all HTML aside this, but remember our file extension is .php. One niya na recognize as HTML. That's why it cannot run any other uh, scripting language or server-side scripting languages like PHP if we're going to open it up directly. That's why it need dapat siya niagi of web server para it translate siya, siya before sending it back to our client. Now let's take a look. Now right now it cannot read it this way. As you can see, you can you can see PHP wala na convert into HTML, di ba? Wala siya na convert into HTML. Now let's take a look here. We know that nas kani siya na ni siya PHP, di ba? Na ni siya PHP nga code which is this. Now this is a proof that web server will translate everything to xml first so let's inspect element and then here we have here the converted version so if ato na siyang i-nana makita na to ang mga codes so here because this is the converted version of the codes as you can see wala na siya php ang nakita na is an actual html that says hello world can you see it Nawala na yung PHP, di ba? Yes, sir. Because ang PHP has been converted into HTML so that it can be rendered on the screen. So if you're going to compare it with our original code, which is this, karon dahil na siya. Alright, that's a proof that um, web servers need to convert everything back to HTML first before sending it back to the client. Alright, next. All right, PHP comments. PHP comment, uh, a comment in PHP code is a line that is not exec executed as a part of program. It is only per its only purpose is to read to be read by someone who is looking at the code. So, um, PHP comments are very useful when it comes to when it comes to designing websites that has very long codes already. Let's say thousands of codes, and then nakagamang editor, um, adding comments from time to time will help you a lot. When it comes to, kana pa ganon para if nakabalikan yung code, pangitaon ni mo, let's say na nakai hundreds or maybe thousands line, thousands of lines of code, bisud na siguro pangitaon di ba? So how to eliminate those times that will take for you to find a certain error or something that you would like to change is to use comments. So it, kung sa page, kung sa HTML, comments are written like this, kana, and then comment. And then close it with that. That's for HTML. Now, we can still use this particular comment if we're adding it on the HTML part. Let's say, for example, dere. Balik sa code. We can still use, for example, can I, let's turn it into a comment or let's add a comment. We can still use the page, the HTML part type or way, which is this. We can still use this. This is the HTML if we are writing it inside the HTML part. However, if it's we are writing it inside the PHP na, na code or function, we are going to use either of these three. So we have double forward slash. This is a single line comment. Hash is also another way of adding a comment. And then if you want to add more than one line, if you can add more than one line of comment, we will use forward slash asterisk and then close it with forward slash asterisk. Okay, so for example, uh, let's let's duplicate this a lot of times. Oops, sorry. Okay, duplicate na tane. So if usara ka line, we can use um, forward slash. Right? Notice it turns to green. That means it's already been converted into comment. We can use two forward slashes or unsa gitong ikadwa? Hashtag. Okay, hash. Alright. 
So we have two forward slashes. It will it will only convert one line. It will only transform one line of gonna into a comment, and then this will also using hash will also just same for a on one line ra. But let's say for example gonna ko kanin duwa may comment. So that's multiple lines already. So we will use forward slash and then asterisk. Alright, notice tanan na himo siyang comment. Now, unsa to sa pag end? Ganahin kong dirira ko to, we will add asterisk and then forward slash. So, notice everything went back to its original color. So, again, for multiple, for single line comment inside PHP, we will use this or this. Or if it's going to be multiple lines, forward slash asterisk and then close it with asterisk forward slash. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Again, yes. use comments. Let's say, na daghan na kay ka mga lines of codes and ganahan kang uh, change ni mo. Ganahan kang, if nakibalikan from time to time, make sure to always use comments so that mabala ni mo. Alright? Um, para ito atong gibuhat last time, na para since nagkopya mga tag files, com, uh, codes coming from Bootstrap, and for us to, kung uh, mabalikan na to siya dayon, if we want to edit it, then we use comments. All right, and then next is declaring variables. So during our C++ and Java lessons, um, we already know about variables. About variables stores information. Uh, variables are containers for storing information. So in C++, uh, we use variables para magkama atong mga calculators nato. So for C++, let's say for example, if we're going to create a variable for a Let's say age, edad. So if you remember, we will use in because edad is an integer. So we'll write in and then our variable name is equals to, let's say, 25. All right. Is that how we write variables on using PHP, uh, using C++? We start with the data type and then identifier, a data type identifier and its value, initialized value. All right. For Java, is going to be similar, but for PHP, to write a variable, it, we will start with a dollar sign, followed by the name of the variable. So here, notice and say difference. This is PHP, PHP, and this is C++. And say difference niya. And say pinaka different ni, difference niya. Alright, wala na siya data type. Here, sa C++, kinahan na natong i-declare ang data, define ang yung data type. Sa PHP, we don't necessarily have to. Diba? Go directly writing the variable name. And the variable name must always start with a dollar sign and then variable name and then the value na imong ganahan. So, basically, what happened? Ano din naman siya kinahan lang of data type? It's because PHP will already will automatically use the, th the proper data type according to the value that na imong set. So, for example, since hello world man siya, what do you think the data type that is going to use? Since hello world man, sa siguro nga data type ang gamiton sa PHP automatically. String. String. Right, that's true. I'm glad that you still remember. So, PHP will automatically use string when using this particular variable in applying or doing anything on inside our inside the website inside the program all right on the second one we have dollar sign x is equals to five what do you think the data type for this in Insert. Okay, integer and then this one right here load, sir. Double, load sir, or double load or double okay so, that, ang nakanindot sa PHP is it will automatically use the appropriate data type depending of on sa value ng imong set. Unlike sa C++ na kinahalang mo ni mong i-define ang yung data type every time. So, again, to start writing a variable, we should always start with a dollar sign and then the name, variable name, and then the equals the value. So, it's the same thing with C++ nga kung imong value is string, you have to enclose it with double quotation. If it's going to be one letter, if you want it to be set as a character, then single quotation. But if it's going to be, it has numerical value like 
integer or float, you don't necessarily have to close it to enclose it with anything. So that's the same thing with C++. When you assign a text value to a variable, put quotes, double quotation, around the value. Actually, it's okay if it's going to be single or double. Uh, PHP will not mind at all. But just a kind of para better practice or a good practice would be using double quote, especially if it's a, if it's a string. Unlike other programming language, there is no need to identify the data type. Like I said, we don't necessarily have to add the data type all the time because PHP will automatically use the appropriate data type. A variable can have a short name like X and Y or more descriptive name. Let's say age, car name, total underscore value. All right, so basically it's going to be the same with C++. Uh, we, can, we, we can choose whatever um, variable name that we want. Pero na siya may exception and that will be like this uh, will be shown to you in just a moment. So here are a few rules in writing PHP variables. And like I said, most of these are just similar to what you already know about variables or uh, what you already know about C++ variables. So a variable should always start with a dollar sign. That. Followed by the name of the variable. So when we're writing a variable name, we should always start with a dollar sign and if we are going to use the variable inside our program we should always start with a dollar sign as well a variable name must start with a letter or underscore character so letter or underscore we cannot start with any other characters let's say um atom variable is let's say dot and then age right we cannot do that because it should always start with either a letter or underscore we cannot start our age with dollar sign and then we can let's start it with let's say number let's say one age we we can't do that we should always start with a letter or underscore that means can for example age we can either write it this way or underscore age and all right a variable name cannot start with a number like i said a variable name can only contain alphanumeric characters and underscore. So even though bisagdil na siya start of dot or any other character, we cannot use any other character at all inside our uh, variable name. So sa kung character comma slash question mark etc. We cannot use those. We can only use alphanumeric. That means we can only use letters and numbers and underscore. All right. And then variable names are case sensitive. So age is different from age. Age small letters and age capital letters are two different variables. So same thing with C++, these two are different. PHP is case sensitive. So if you use a particular variable name that is on all lowercase or maybe one of the letter is uppercase, make sure to use the same way for the rest of the web page. Otherwise, delete niya ma. Okay. All right. So the PHP echo. Uh, but, do, but do you have any questions for the variables? By the way, pas pasan lang nato din since already itapulo na gunin yung programming language ni and um, everything is the same. The only thing that differs are how do we write it. Do you have any questions so far? Nagets lang. Okay, next sir. Next sir. Let's proceed. Yes, Output variables. So remember, uh, we can also output the value of the variable, just like C++ and any other programming languages that we've experienced in the past. And we will use the echo function. The PHP echo statement is often used to output data to the screen. So C++ it's also called uh, C out. All right. And then sa Java, it's called what's that? It's a kind of system that help, sir, that print line. Print line, system that print line, all right? And then, sa so, so PHP, it's only echo, PHP echo. The following example will show how to output text and a variable. So, let's say, for example, we will declare that our variable, variable text is PHP, and then we are going to echo i love and then dollar sign and then our variable name and then the output should be something like this let's try it. 
let's erase all of it all right asa nato ibutan atong variables make sure that it's enclosed this di nato pwede ibutan dire sa gawas because dili siya mabasa let's say for example we will declare a var variable here let's call it katong ganina txt as you can see wala siya ni color because right now um, the browser or the compiler, the ID is trying to acknowledge this as an HTML code. So, dapat isulod nato siya sa tong PHP. And you'll see the difference. Color na siya. Diba? So, that's gonna be our variable. It's called PHP. So, since the, the value is PHP, unsa siguro nga dito type in the method? String. String. Alright. And let's try to output it. So, we will use echo. And then double code. Let's say, for example, I love. And then if you're going to add this, we're just going to add a dollar sign and then text. All right. Notice that it automatically lit up. It's automatic. It's already lit. That means yan ang nabalaan niya kanisya variable. And then end. Now, what is the difference between this and C++? Sa iyang output. How do we combine strings and variables sa C++? You can remember. Naman to sugawas na quotation, Guru, sir. Yes, pagkawas na sa quotation. It's called, ang sakit, tawag, Ana? Concatenation. Taron. Very good. Ganun, Guru, mo kayo nung pag-iahapot. Concatenation. So, it's called concatenation. So, kung sa C++ pa, let's write it here. Let's create a comment. Kung sa C++ pa ni, let's write it here. It should it should look like something like this, C plus plus. The output should be um, C out, and uh, and then double quote, I love, and then and uh, and then space and another in another code before the variable name which is txt. Let's take let's take try to take a look at the difference. So this is how we write it on C++, but this is how we write it on PHP. So mas sayon a PHP, di ba? Kung mag kung mag C++ is a little bit more complicated when it comes to concatenating compared to PHP. So let's try. Let's see if it's working. Let's save it, and then all we need to do is reload the page. Tada! I love PHP. The PHP here is the variable, and it's turned into and HTML. So we can add more. For example, can have tangam add a period. And then let's say how about you. Alright, so kung sa page sa C plus plus panin daghana kay tang gigamat ng mga codes, but sa C HTML it's going to be just the same thing. And alright, so that's concatenation or displaying values into the screen using PHP. Do you have any questions? I guess, right? And, All right. and yes, then, okay, here's two things. Um, um, basically, na pa pa agi when it comes to displaying um, output text on the screen. We already know about echo, but another example is also print. Um, echo and print are more or less the same. They have, they are both used to output data on the screen. So if you decide not to use echo, ganana ka print, we can also use print. But I think that's a difference, but I haven't really, I haven't really, I na not research on the difference between print and echo, but basically it's the same thing. All right, let me erase this. Let's save that. So we, for the first line, we use echo, and for the second line, we use print. I love PHP too. Now, okay, so unsa na to pag add og kuan line break. If it's a C plus plus, unsa unsa na to pag add og line break. End line. End line or na patay line di ba? Slash end. Slash end. 
backslash backslash actually it's the same thing so ganun ta mag pag mag backslash and punta it's gonna be it's gonna give us a new line so it should be before the closing code wala lagi siya all right i think let's add it here Let's put. Let's try putting it here. So it should work, supposedly. Hold on. Let's see. Hola. Okay. Let me. Let me choose that to change what time. I think there. There is that. All right. I think. I think we should be able to use backslash n. But most of the time, here's what most uh, designers do. Can I? Let me show it to you guys. We will use this particular. Uh, for example, in echo, it's like a line. Let's call it. We'll add this. I'm not sure what this is called. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Okay, NL two BR. Okay, let's change it to echo. So I don't to make sure. All right, we will use NL two BR. Let's save that and then let's reload. Oh no. Hold on. Ay, sayo. Sayo pa akong gamit. Here, how... Most of the designers will do it this way. Let me close it up. Let's add this right here. And then, we'll have to enclose our text with a parenthesis. And then that's the time that we can use backslash n. Let's say, for example, I love ph. I don't know txt php two. So that's the time that we can use our backslash n. So let's try. Let's save it. And then let's reload. And most programmers will do it this way. So again, echo and then nl. Excuse <laughs> me. NL2BR. Right. Echo NL2BR and then your words na nag contain multiple lines will be enclosed with double quote. Ah, no. Uh, parenthesis. And then to break the line, you have to add backslash N. Right? That's how most programmers do it. Pero, sa mga medyo, medyo tapulan gamay, here's how we're going to do it. So let's remove everything back. Okay, you might want to take a screenshot or. Let me just add another one now. So we'll add another echo. So this is how I'm going to do it. If ako, um, let's say, sume, hello world. So no, remember that. Make sure na close na diba? Remember that we can also add. We can also use. We can also use. Um, we can also use HTML if you can remember. We can also write HTML inside a koan. We can also write an HTML inside HTML tag inside a PHP. So unsay atong gamiton na HTML tag to break a line. Kung mo break ta og line or create a new line using HTML, what unsay HTML tag atong gamiton? BRC. BR. That's right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create another echo. And then double code, and then the br function, just like that. Again, we can also use HTML inside our PHP. So, di ba nakasulod ng PHP? But how do we add an HTML? Same thing. We're going to use echo, and then we will katung PHP na tong atag. We will use it as a string, just like that. We have br, and then let's say for example another echo. Let's call it hmm, hello universe. Yeah, let's say that lang. Okay. So remember, again, we can also use HTML inside our echo, inside our PHP codes. So if we're going to save that and reload, so here, nara. Ah, let's add another. Putangan na tugla ng B address tas. Dad, 
Tara. So basically, we can also, there are multiple ways in breaking or adding new lines using HTML, uh, PHP. First is we're going to use this. NL2BR. New line to break something, I'm not sure. But NL2BR. But if it's something that you cannot memorize, again, after you adding the NL2BR function, all your texts, the multiple texts, you have to write it inside the parenthesis. And then to break the line, you'll have to use backslash n. Okay? However, para dili kayo mo maglisod, maglisod may memorize ane, you can always use echo br. Pero make sure nga yung br nga tag is enclosed with double code. Again, br is an HTML tag. Okay? So that means we can also, for example, what if ganahan kong mahimun siyang header? All we need to do is add the, for example, h1. And then close h1. If we're going to save it, this will turn into HTML tag. And just like that. Again, we can also, we can, we can output not just string, but we can also output HTML codes. Do you follow? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. The echo and print are most more or less the same. They are both used. They're both used to output data on the screen. So basically, right. Same room, yapon. So let's try now. Napoy lai ng way of concatenation using dots. Let's see. This is by sa unang panahon ni nani yon pagkonkatenate of HTML or PHP. But because of the new update, pwede na tumo concatenate ng direct na bit. So so let's try doing this now. Okay, you might want to take a screenshot. I'm going to take it off. So we're going to declare multiple variables. So we have text one, learn PHP. So and let's call it text one is equals to learn. That this is going to be our first value of our variable. Then another variable is dollar uh, text two. And then let's say ITS 300. And then we'll have another variable for X. And then let's set it to 5. And then variable Y. Let's set it 4. And then concatenate. Okay, so let's try. So we will use echo to display. So we can either use, use it this way, but as a C++, um, to separate variables and um, strings, we have to separate them with dot. In C++, that is double angle brackets. In PHP, that is dot. But I think we can use the, because of the new updates, we can just use this. For example, let's say learn, I don't know. Okay, we'll, we'll write it in a header. Then variable txt underscore one. And then close variable, uh, close h1. And then another echo. Study in okay. All right. So um, we'll see the difference. This is the easiest way. Uh, maybe in a new version of PHP, we can concatenate codes or variables and strings like this. But in the old ones, we have to concatenate it this way. So we'll, we can just disregard this. You can just disregard this because we can concatenate now in much easier way, which is using this way. So, una, kinahan lang, parek si plus plus ba? But instead of using angle brackets, we'll have to use dots to separate this. Okay? But it should work just the same. So for example, let's add a break line. Akana lang. Let's try to run it. And if we're going to reload the thing, it should also work just the same. It says, this is our first variable. 
IPS 300 is our second variable. So we can still concatenate them. All right. So this would be our activity next when we see each other in the laboratory this coming Thursday or Friday. I'm still not sure. Uh, hopefully, by the end of the day, I will be able to give you the schedule and time. So we're going to create a simple PHP page. It must contain your basic personal information, such as name, address, age, and course. Use variables for each information and display using echo or print function. So uh, this would be done in face-to-face in class. Okay. I'm just going to share it to you so that we can pra practice this on your own. All right. Do you have any questions so far? No, no, sir. Okay. Let's add one more discussion so that this for us to be ready for our. So one more topic before uh, we'll discuss the rest of the data types. So since we've only discussed the how to write variables let's try to let's discuss a few of the data types that we'll, that we are going to encounter um when once we are going to work with a php program so next lesson actually this is lesson 12 i'm um, exploring data types so we will already learn about data types in our previous lesson so c plus plus we have we already learned about string integer character Float, double, etc. Well, everything would be the same in PHP. So we're we're going to discuss some of the data types. We're not going to finish it all. We will be discussing it in our future lessons. But let's discuss the most common ones. So PHP data types. Data types determines which type of data to be used in the program. PHP supports the common data types, including string, which we already discussed in our page in our C plus plus lessons. Integer float or double, character, arrays, and boolean. Have you have you tried arrays na? Especially it's a new programming tool. It's a new programming tool. Okay. Experience about okay. arrays. Yes, sir. All right, that's good. So it wouldn't be very hard for me to discuss it. Then. Because of C++, I, think, I don't think I have discussed it, so C++ during um, programming one. But I'm expecting that on your programming tool, um, you were discussed with or you will learn about arrays. So compared to C++, defining the data type is not needed in writing a variable. PHP will automatically use the appropriate data type based on the value. So for example, so C++, we will define it first with a data type, let's say string, and then variable name, which is in this case, let's call it text. And then the word, the value. So PHP, like I said, we only have to write the variable name without defining the data type. It's because Based on the value that you will set, PHP will automatically use the appropriate data type. So this means PHP will use unsa siguro ganito. Unsa gamitin siguro niya based on the variable based on the value unsa yung gamitin niya data type. Data type. String sir. String. Okay. So sa C plus plus will have to write it ourselves. We we'll have to, we have to define it ourselves. In PHP, it will automatically define it by itself. So let's start discussing the data type. We're only going to discuss, I think, string, integer, float, and character. As for the arrays and boolean, we'll discuss it in our next meeting, okay? So string is a set of characters like letters, symbols, and numbers. It is defined inside quotation marks, in either single or double quotation. So like I said, you can either write it using the value using double quote or just single ones. Okay, but make sure to enclose it with quotation though. All right, and then in non-programming terms, string is the same as text. So we already know about that. Example of using strings are for names, addresses, titles, descriptions, sentences, and more. Uh, do you have anything to say? Please uh, the And then, name a question. All right. So we we'll already know about the uses of strings, right? So if we're going to use values that includes, like, say, names, addresses, titles, or any values that will that will require that will involve multiple words, multiple characters, we will use a string. So again, you can either define or declare initialize the value using double quote or single quote. It would be totally up to us. So for example, this one right here, echo hello world. We are using uh, double code or we can also use single code 
So in declaring variables, we can also use same thing, right? Double code or simple code as the same thing. All right, so I'm not going to discuss this anymore since we've already discussed it a while ago, but you may copy this code, you may take a screenshot, or maybe I'm going to send, of course, I'm going to send this to you later on, and then you can try doing it yourself. So we've already discussed this. We will use echo to the output a, output a string or output a text. And to output a text, it must be enclosed with either double code or a single code. And it's not just text that we can output. We can also output HTML tags just like this. All right. And we can also output variables, variable values just like that. Since this is variable, we can also use echo. But this time, if we're going to echo a variable, there is no need for us to enclose it with anything. We're going to enclose only with double quote or single quote if we are pertaining to strings only. All right, so I'm not going to discuss it any longer. Uh, again, concatenation, uh, you can disregard this. Another way to concatenate is just remove all of this. All right, just remove this. You'll be able to concatenate by, by just displaying multiple variables and text on the same line. This is an older way, mga good. Sa unang panahon, before sa PHP 5, inaniyo na ito pag concatenate, but during PHP 5, we no longer have to do this way. Alright, so here are a few string functions. What do you mean by functions, by the way? Functions will allow us, it will allow easier and faster coding processes. Here are a few string functions. So, uh, the good thing about PHP, siguro diha maayo diha nakapa advantage ang PHP is using its function. Now, we have different functions. Um, PHP has a lot of functions and we cannot discuss all of it, but I'm going to discuss each data type. I'm just going to discuss a few its functions. This is something that cannot be found with C++ or Java. This is unique only to PHP and this, this makes uh, PHP a very good programming language when it comes to designing because functions are like shortcuts functions are like shortcuts so let's say for example we have this is all for string functions so for example if ganhan kang i-convert ang all okay convert ganhan ka i-convert ang imong string to lowercase so for example ang imong string is all uppercase and ganhan kang i-convert everything to lowercase then we will use this str to lower function so how do we do that? Let's say, for example, let's open up our code and let's set our string to kinda, text is equals to kinda, all lowercase. Uh, I love programming. This is our text, our string. And then, ganahan kung I convert that into all uppercase or uppercase and language. Let's start with the first one. Um, I love programming. Okay. Notice that we write our we wrote our string into upper all uppercase, diba? Can you see it? Oh, let me. Okay, kana. Naka uppercase yata na. Now, how do we change it into lowercase? Uh, good thing about PHP is na ay siya mga shortcut. So all we need to do is echo str to lower. Okay. Okay. And then we have to enclose our uh, and then the variable. Let's say ato uppercase, a lowercase nato is a dot uh, ato ang text variable. So txt and then kira. Now if ato ni our variable is I love programming in all caps. We can use the function str or string to lower. And then make sure that it our variable is enclosed with a parenthesis. And then if we're going to run it, it will display it in all lowercase. Diba? Ganina, uppercase ang yung original, but we transform it to lowercase. That's the good thing about PHP is that na siya mga shortcut ng mga functionalities. And it's called functions. So that is for string. Let's try another one. Oh no, no, lahi akong na close. Kadai lang. 
Hold well on, guys. Lahi akong na-close nga file. Okay. Another another function is called um, str to upper. Dapat na ni R. Alright. Okay. Converts entire string to uppercase. So, it's the other way around. So, for example, na atay another variable that is all lowercase. So, let's have another variable here. Let's call it uh, txt2. The value is uh, I, uh, web programming, web uh, development. All right, our variable text to is all written in all our case. Now, how do we write it in uppercase? So we will use echo and then str2 upper, str2 upper, and then our var the variable, so that we convert a variable is an txt2. So txt2, and then if we're going to save it, so again, we are trying to convert or trans, yeah, convert variable text to web development into all uppercase. So if we're going to save that and then reload, nana, web development, all, all uppercase of the chat. All So let's add a new line. All right, another function is uc first converts the first word of the string to uppercase. Now, if gana hata tanga ang first nga letter lang of the string is going to be uppercase, we are going to use the word uc first. So let's say, for example, gana a first letter, this one would be uppercase. So we'll write echo uc. uc means uppercase. And then first, and then inside our parenthesis would be the text, so variable txt2, and then let's save that, let's reload. And first, no, first word, which is development, he sets that into uppercase. Okay? All right, another example. And then we have uc words. So, when you say user words converts the first letter of each word. So, kung sa UC first, ang first nga word ra, but UC words, tanan nga mga words, iyang i-uppercase ang first letter. So, let's say for example, our text to has two words, di ba? Web and development. So, if we're going to use echo UC words for text to Unsa iyang uppercase ani siguro? Ang unsa nga words ang iyang uppercase? Taga kanang W W and D. D. All right. So let's save that. Let's reload. Tara, web and development. Okay? And now uh, kindly read the rest of the functions and then you may go to w3schools.com/php to know all the functions okay, okay, because Okay, okay. Dili lang kani siya but you might want to try it yourself. Make sure to try it yourself. So, str len returns the length of the string. Once sa iyang katas on. str repeat. Ganan kang balik ko nimo ang words. And then, string, string finds the first occurrence of a string inside another string. But basically, you just have to try it, uh, try it yourself. So, for example, for the str replace, this is how it writes. Replace by string. So, ganan kang nga, kita na kay ang word nimo is, um, the quick brown fox, and then ganan kang ang quick isla ni mo og super fast. Then all you need to do is write, write the word str replace. The first one is quick. Muni imong ganhang pulihan. The word, di ba? Imong word is the quick brown fox. So ang quick isla ni, the first quotation would be the word that you wanted to replace. And then the second one, the comma, and then the second word would be the word that you're going to replace it with. So that means ang quick no word is it like this line of super fast. And then asa siya, unsang variable, the third, which is kani, 
all right replaces quick with super fast so the first instant would be the word name mong replace the second word nga imong ibutang is ang word nga imong i-replace it with and then ug asa nga variable okay ang location so i'm not going to discuss all of it please try it yourself i'm going to give you an assignment later on to try whether or not you really did some uh, studying about functions all right so to learn more about string functions kindly follow this link and we will discuss one more fact na lang um, string na lang o integer na lang and then the rest Please study it yourself. Next, integer data type. Integer is a data type with numerical value of whole numbers. That means positive or negative whole numbers. It doesn't have any fractions. It doesn't have any decimal values. Integer, that's integer. It is defined without any enclosure or quotation marks. So if we're going to write it on a variable, you don't necessarily have to enclose it with anything. Just write the variable name and then the value directly if it's going to be integer. In non-programming term, string is the same as numbers. We already know about that. And example of using integers are for age, arithmetic operations, counting, and more. All right, so we already know about that. Kapilan uh, nagbalik balik of integer data type. So let's focus more on let's focus more on the functions, um, integer functions. So basically, it's everything would be the same. You can use arithmetic operations like plus. And then we can use the PEMDAS, PEMDAS, no, no, uh, sorry, sorry, PEMDAS. And say about PEMDAS, gani? When it comes to arithmetic operation, we have, what's the P? Parenthesis. We have parenthesis, then after slot, and then E, it would be? Exponent. Exponential values. M is multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. That's the order on how you're going to. So in this example, we have, of course, we started with creating the variable or creating the equation. We start computing. Um, it should always start computing whatever it is that inside a parenthesis and then proceed with the rest of the order, M does. All right, so I'm not going to discuss it because it's going to be the same on how to deal with arithmetic operation. So let's discuss its function. So you might wanna, uh, don't worry, I'm going to send this to you so you can try and do it yourself. Uh, do you want me to discuss this or do you think you can understand it on your own? Naka discuss na matanis arithmetic before. So basically, it's, everything would be the same. The only thing that differs are the number, the variables. Okay? Okay lang ba? Yes, sir. All right. So we'll skip this. Anyway, I'm going to give this uh, presentation to you. So we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, increment, decrement. All right, so we're just going to skip this, the arithmetic operation uh, using integers, but you can do it. I, I'm pretty sure you can do it yourself. Now, let's focus on the integer function. So here are a few um, integer functions. Uh, again, functions allow easier and faster coding process. Here are a few integers. We have ABS, returns the positive value of an integer. ABS stands for absolute value. So for example, kung ang imuhang num integer is, let's say, uh, 100. What is the absolute value of 100? Guys. Kung say absolute value sa 100. Let's go back to our college algorithm. Kung Absolute value returns the positive value of an integer. So what is the positive value of 100? What is the absolute value? What is the absolute value? 100. 100. 100. Right? Now, what if the negative 100? What is the absolute value of negative 100? Of negative 100. Positive 100, sir. 100. All right. So again, absolute value or ABS, basically it, it returns the positive value of an integer. So let's say, for example, okay. Um, Okay, let's have another one. Uh, let's call it string. So for the next one, let's call it age, one upward, and then integer. And then
Okay, we'll have let's have another variable. Let's call it uh, num one. Num one is equals to a negative forty five. Takto bang ibuhat? Kaya mabal na na rosak to ba? All right, so. We're going to echo the absolute value. Echo ABS for positive for under for underscore num one. All right. So we are trying to display the value of our variable num one, which has value of negative forty five. Let's save that and let's reload. Tara, nemo siyang forty five because it changed it it changed its value from from being a negative to a positive. Right, that is using ABS function. So, can you, how do how do you write one by the way? As you can see, ABS and then I parenthesis inside the parenthesis. Diyan ni mo ibotang ang. It could be either the variable or the actual value. So, for example, uh, let's use another value. For example, that atong atong value is let's say negative eight. Kana random number. Kana. So, what would be the positive value of this? So, if we're going to save that and let's reload. Tara. So, by the way, don't ayar mo ka, ayar mo kating, ayar mo og kalibog na basic ang inside sa parenthesis or dapat variables rajad. No, you can put the actual value directly. Okay. All right. So another function is power p o w returns the exponential value of an integer. So how do we write that? So here for the power for us to get the exponential value, let's say for example two to the power of eight. Berbag, inan yun siapa? How do we solve this? Let's say, for example, nine to the power of ten. Kena, how do we solve that? The bad that is nine times nine times nine hundred ika ten power. Is that right? The bad, anak mana? Satu bane? Yes sir. Yes sir. Ten. Yes sir. So that's how we solve it. In PHP, we will write it this way: echo and then pow and then the first number is this. And then the second number is the exponent. So let's put two and eight. Sorry. Okay, I wanna hold on. I put on my lights, camera action. All right. So again. The first number is going to be the base, and then the second number would be the exponent. So let's try. So our number is, let's set it to 40, back to 45. And let's get up a lot. We'll have another variable. Let's call it num2. Let's say na a value of 9. So we want to display 9 to the 10th power. So echo, then pow. And then close parenthesis, close and open parenthesis, and then num one. Oh, uh, ganon tanga ang nine. So we can either use pas, uh, num two, and then the exponent which is ten. Again, we can either use uh, the variable or use the number directly. So let's save that and let's reload. The answer for let me add a to i. Let me add line break. Tara, manirihang answer. Okay, or let's have another one. Let's say um, 4 to the 5th power. 4, 5. Meaning ana is, kane, we'll try to solve this. 4 and then 5. Kana, how do we solve that? We will use the first number. And then the second number, this is the base number, where this is the exponent. So let's save that. Let's add a line break. Let's reload. Ta -da, 10, 24. Okay, and then zapa. square root. All right, it's the same thing, returns a square root of value of an integer. So for example, what would be the square root of 
Give me a number, guys. SQRT, that's for the square root. Square root of 100. All right? So let's say, let's try to compute the square root of 100. So let's save that. Let's reload. Tada! Goes na yung answer automatically. Now, let's try to understand. Ano ni ma minut kaya niya nga muna advantage sa PHP. This is what an ad the advantage of PHP compared to other programming languages because of its function. So let's say for example, how do we compute this square root of uh major listening siya? So let's say the power of katong power or exponential value. O sa C plus plus pa nato na buhaton kinan nata multiply di ba? Nine times nine times nine times nine. And to ikapolo, is that how we were going to do? Or let's say 4 to the 5th power. So we're going to move, move like 4, uh, 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Is that how we're going to con to multiply it? To compute the power? 4 to the 5th power? Nani yun ba nato? Yes, sir. Okay. So in any other programming languages, maybe that this is how we're going to compute it, but. Using PHP, we can just use it this way. So another function are called random. So when you say random, it will return any random number from, let's say for example, if we're going to, okay, if we're going to write echo rand and then empty, basically it will returns any number. It could be either millions, hundred millions, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three uh, numbers, but it will just um, generate random random numbers. Okay, but if we're going to set a minimum and maximum, so the first number would be the minimum and the second number is the maximum. Now, kanus asiguro ni siya useful? Kanus akamugama o program that will allow you, that kanang ginhalang tamo generate o random na number? And think of any program kuno na. Think of any program that will let you, kana paganing ginhalang tamo generate o random numbers? Can I authentication? Authentication. Yeah, that's true. Authentication. So, for example, mga maka og program nga mo sign up and then sa password before siya maka access sa website, kinahanglan siyang send sa siya og authentication number sa yang email or something like that. So how do you how do you generate the random numbers using this? Another example is mga maka program nga magpara for raffle. Diba? Random man ang mga numbers ana. So generate the random number pukin sa tong mabunutan mo ibuda og. So for example, nagpa random ka og create ka og online is it okay? Can I say Facebook? Can I? No, buy it. Got 50 ang slots. Is it okay? Can I? Is it okay? Try it. Or kabantay it. Is it okay? Can I? 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 So, if you can generate the numbers, we can use this particular function. So, let's try that. So, if we're going to echo a random number, so it will generate any other, any numbers. Now, if we're going to reload it, it's going to be another number. Every time that we're going to reload, we can see it. Can you see it? Makita ba? Yes. Yes. It, yes. It, it, basically, it just generate random numbers. So we can also set we can also set minimum and maximum. So if we'll say, for example, the minimum is from one to ten lang. All right. So the first number is the, well, that's the starting number, and then the second number is the last number. So one to ten. So if we're going to generate, it will only generate numbers from one to ten. So we have seven, and then if we're going to reload it. Five, five will be up on one, three. All right. So basically, it will generate multiple numbers. All right. And I think that's it for today, since we ran out of time already. For the rest of the uh, data types, uh, you may you may practice. Uh, I'm going to send this to you, and then hoping that everybody will be able to um, follow or let's say do an advanced study. Make just study it on your own lang. Uh, that's the that's the good thing about college is that you can always do an advance. And actually, that's the a proper student should always do, especially if sa, sa mga core na subjects. This subject is very important. I would really say I'm not saying this because this is a subject that I teach, 
but in real world as a person who experienced real world real world na nga mga experiences when it comes to IT web development is the most kuan pinaka usa sa mga pinakataas nga sweldo high paying jobs and pinaka in demand nga jobs because gamera kay mga tawo amo mo mo develop up mga website so I'm, i really want you guys i really appreciate it if you wish to pursue uh feel in the field of web development uh try to do an advanced study all right so i'm going to give you the things that you need to learn that you have to learn and make sure to do your part as well hopefully okay so we have float and then na pa na mga float functions round up ceiling floor etc we have and then this would be the assignment okay so for your assignment you're going to create a program to solve the following problem you put 1000 pesos in a bank account that gains 3% interest annually how much money will be in the account after 5 years the first is you're going to the deposit or the solution would be total deposit initial deposit times annual interest rate times number of years plus initial deposit so again Ang imong kwarta is 1,000, that gains 3% interest annually. How much money will be in the account after 5 years? So, you're going to learn, you're going to use the lessons that you've learned sa dere, sa integer, and then the arithmetic operations, and uh, basically, ginhatag mo na ko ang pantun, ang solution. So, initial deposit, which is 1,000, times annual interest rate. What is the annual interest rate? 3% times number of years. So that is 1,000 times 3 times uh, times 5 years plus initial deposit, which is 1,000. So how much money will you have in your bank after 5 years if you initially put 1,000? All right. Do you think you can do that using, although you have to compute, but you have to compute it using your, using um, PHP. All right. Kaya ba? Yes, sir. All right. So that is for your assignment. Don't you worry. If you need help, I'll be there. Namang kusa, namang mag-meet man ta either during Thursday or Friday sa laboratory, and I will be able to assist you working on this one. So um, it will be posted through Google Classroom, and then for the other assignment, I'll give you. Uh, let's, uh, let me just give you one month na lang katong sa inyong previous nga assignment um, with the two videos that I'm going to attach. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, so that will be all for today. If you wish to learn more about PHP, and next meeting, we will continue with the other uh, data types and functions. But if you wish to learn more about them, just go to www.com slash PHP, or you can go to lynda.com. All right, this one right here, I'm going to post na po ko yung mga list of videos coming from lynda.com. I'm going to give you the link so that you can download the videos. Actually, Mona, I hungi, you download ako na video because it's been a while since the last time that I learned PHP, college pa gugo ato. And then, katung nag teach na ko sa nur, so I have to refresh my memory. So, I use this W3 schools and kani tutorial from linda.com. I'll send you the link for the video training stats. All right. So, do you have any questions? None, sir. All right. Um, kindly turn on your cameras.